Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic. I hope you're having a very happy new comic book day. Just got back from a comic book store. I've got nine books on my pull list uh, for my um, reading pleasure this week. And I am definitely going to try and get them read in time so I can put up a video for Sunday because over here in the UK it's Easter bank holiday. So we have Friday and Monday off so I will be away. Um, I'm not staying here at my home for the weekend, so I've got to try and get all that done before I leave. If not, it's going to be Monday, let's be honest here. Uh, also, I'm hoping to have up on Friday uh, the end of the month pop culture roundup, where I'll be chatting to you about stuff that's not necessarily about comics. What uh, music I've been listening to, what books I've been reading, what TV and movies I've been watching, um, that's almost together, so fingers crossed that will be there for this Friday. Thank you to everyone who watched Sunday's comic book review video, um, really enjoyed making that, uh, despite the weirdness of some books that were going on. Um, so now let's have a look what has come up on my pull list this week, and there is a huge variety of books this week from uh, several different uh, houses, publishing houses. So we're going to kick off with uh, Valiant Comics. It's issue 13 of XO Man of War and we have this uh, Visigoth storyline. Uh, we still have, uh, oh no, I don't think it is. Is this a new artist? No, I don't think it is. Ryan Boddenheim um, with uh, Matt Kint. Uh, the artwork, I've said uh, previously, has been absolutely fantastic. It had that kind of painterly quality to it, while this, um, in this issue, it's more of your kind of standard comic book um, artwork, which it's not bad, but when you've been treated to so much of that painterly type stuff, um, it feels a little bit, oh, it's just kind of comic book art. It's neither great, it's neither bad. Uh, but was really digging this particular storyline where we've had these intergalactic bounty hunters after Arik, um, after all the kind of different states and tribes of this um, version of, I guess it's Earth, um, all kind of got together and usurped him from his power as ruler of, of the planet. Uh, and um, got these intergalactic bounty hunters to try and kill him. Uh, but he's back. He's not naked anymore. <laughs> he's got his armour back. And um, he went off and kicked butt. So looking forward very much to that. Uh, the third of four issues over at uh, Burger Books. Uh, the uh, side imprint of Dark Horse. It's Hungry Ghosts. Uh, this kind of anthology horror series. Um, last issue, uh, I thought one of the stories was very, very good. Uh, the backup, I guess, story you'd call it, wasn't so. Uh, and that's the case with all anthology series. It's it's all a bit hit and miss. Um, I, I like the, the feeling, you know, that you get all these different artists on on the book in this one this week especially we've got art by uh paul pope um big fan of paul pope's artwork and art style um so really uh looking forward to the horror that um these guys are going to bring to this book this week a couple of books from image and we reach Chapter 50 of Saga, 50 issues of our huge sci-fi epic and we have a kind of family portrait of this um, of this family that we've been following since issue one. Um, I've been a kind of felt a little bit let, let down by Saga of late um, but it kind of does this thing, it kind of has these lulls where and, and I've had repeat myself every week, every month when I talk about Saga, it's 
It's still good comics. Saga, Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples are doing still good stuff. It's just not that great stuff that we had right at the beginning. And I understand that they can't keep that uh, kind of momentum of craziness and shock value, despite the fact that they've kind of tried. Um, I know they can't keep that up with every issue again and again. I'm going to have these troughs, but... Given that this book also, along with so many other image books, they have these um, hiatus, uh, uh, these breaks, you kind of don't want to come back to a story that's just in a lull. You've already had the lull by the fact that the book hasn't been out for two or three months. Um, but we'll see what these guys have got up their sleeves for, I guess you could call it a monumental or monumentous uh, occasion, reaching issue 50. Uh, the other book I've got from Image this week is issue two of um, uh, Richard Starkin and Tyler Shanelings with great art by uh, Shaky Kane. It's the beef! Um, rather provocative cover there. I'm just going to leave that up. Um, I didn't know what to make of the actual story um, in last issue. I always expect kind of over the top craziness from Shaky Kane. Uh, but the story, I don't know what it's trying yet to say, uh, what its purpose is. Um, there's kind of this um, consumption of meat and how invasive it is in American society. And then on the other hand, it's kind of like this kind of disgusting um, portrayal of, you know, the cows um, and getting blown up or run over or and they're all being made into these beef burgers um, and then right at the end one of the guys who's been eating these burgers for um, for well since he was a kid turned into the beef um, so we'll see what all that is about but it's shaky cane artwork and I will buy anything he does um, quite, a books, quite a few books from Marvel this week. Um, the big one, I guess, is the issue 600 of Daredevil. I presume this is wrapping up uh, the Mayor Fisk storyline. We'll see how it get, ties in with all the other heroes that Daredevil has been um, amassing. We've got, who we've, got? we've got Moon Knight, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Spider-Man... Um, I'm not sure who those women are at the back. I don't know if anyone can see them and tell me or even look at your own cover. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, if you want a closer look at these comic book covers, um, go follow me on Twitter. About half an hour, hour after this video goes up, I uh, post up all the covers of the books that I'm showing you now so you can get a, a better look at them. Uh, but obviously it's issue 600, so there's a big, thick uh, book. I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of backup story in the back, but what's going to happen? What is going to be the big climax of this story? I'll hopefully be able to tell you at the weekend. Issue 193 of Moon Knight, and uh, still continuing this new run by Max Bemis uh, with Crazy Runs in the Family. I. It feels very much like a vertigo book to me and I think that's just because of the fact that the uh, the artist has come off uh, a vertigo book um, and follow I think it was uh, and he's kind of brought that art style to one of the um, the kind of lower tier superheroes of Marvel but I like it I like this ridiculous kind of psychological um, multiple personality of Moon Knight and them kind of trying to work with each other but almost not trusting each other. The fact that uh, one of the personalities of Moon Knight has had a baby with uh, an ex, well, is it an ex-girlfriend <laughs> when you're the same person? You're just in each other's heads? I don't know. But still, it's a great fun book to be reading. 
Um, issue number 24 of X-Men Blue uh, from Cullen Bunn. I'm presuming this is the next part of the Cry Havoc storyline. Um, we've got Havoc and Magneto there. Um, maybe Magneto is going to come back into the fore. It's obviously been about the, um, the time displaced X-Men kids from the 60s. Um, that Magneto has been um, uh, leading. Um, maybe Havoc isn't too happy about that. We'll find out. Said so this is a comic that's kind of been off the boil for a little bit. Um, really kind of enjoyed it, the the start of this, but it's it's perhaps not long for my pull list. Um, finally, from Marvel, it's issue 302 of Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, continuing on with the amazing fantasy storyline where they've gone back in time. Spider-Man, um, his fake faux sister that could really be his sister. I still don't quite get all that. And J. Jonah Jameson uh, trying to find a way to uh, resolve the the tinkerer's plans that are happening in present day with the alien invasion. Um, last issue, very confusing. Um, I'm very confused about this premise that Doom said in the issue previous to uh, last issue, two issues ago, where he basically said nothing you do in the past is going, to, you can't affect anything in the future or present. And yet they're going around doing all sorts of ridiculously stupid stuff um, where it surely will clearly affect present day. Very confusing. But a lot of fun nonetheless. Chip Zdarsky doing a great job on this book. Um, a penultimate issue this week, it's issue 43 of The Flash, still gearing up to The Flash War. I'm wondering if we're <coughs> kind of leading up to the climax of that storyline for issue 50, make it a big spectacular, um, but we're up to issue 43. Oh, we ended the last issue with The Flash getting his powers back which we all knew was going to happen, but all of his kind of teammates, Wally, both of them, um, and the, I think it's the Chinese uh, girl um, that's got the speed force, they've all had their minds kind of uh, usurped by uh, Grodd. Um, so as you can see from the cover, uh, bashing him around, but never judge a book by its cover. This might not even happen inside, but still, Fun stuff, the art, oh I must check this before, oh thank goodness, um, it's not the same artist as last um, last issue, which was just horrendous, it was terrible, um, they, they need to stop doing this uh, shipping twice, uh, twice a month, go back to the month, leave one artist on it and just let them play in that playground for a bit. Finally, and the book that I'm looking most forward to, it's issue two of this, I think it's a four-part mini-series from IDW, The Highest House. Um, I adored the first issue. I was chatting to um, Ian in the comic book store tonight about this, and um, apparently, I'm going to have to check this, um, this is actually reprinted material. Um, it was actually, or I've been told, it was a uh, a foreign, a foreign publication, and it's just kind of been translated. And as soon as um, the guy at the comic book store told me that, I kind of it kind of clicked with me. Um, this does feel very much a European comic. It doesn't feel Americanized um, really. And I, I get that vibe now, and it, it's the thing that's clicked with me now to think, yes, this is a reason why I love this book. Um, and I really implore you to go out and find this this great fantasy um, story in this oversized uh, comic book magazine format. Um, great artwork by Peter Gross um, with uh, Mike Carey writing, uh, joining back up again after last time I think they were both together was with The Unwritten, which was another great Vertigo series. But fantastic book. This is certainly going to be top of my pile to read this week. 
So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you don't want to miss out on all my thoughts and opinions on those books uh, this weekend. Give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know what you're collecting down in the comment section down below. What you're picking up today. What did I miss? Until I see you next. Bye-bye.